Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, Station is ready for the event. U.S. Air Force Academy and Jack Swigert Aerospace Ag Academy, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Jack Swigert Aerospace Academy. How do you hear me? Hello, we hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. We have a difficulty with audio on our end. Okay, guys. Okay, how do you hear me now? Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Ian Robertson, and I wanted to ask, um, what do you miss the most about Earth and why? Okay, yeah, well, you know, coming up here is, of course, a great adventure, but there's always things. The biggest thing you miss, of course, is your family and your friends. And I would have to say probably after that, I think food, some of our favorite foods are the thing we, things we miss the most. Next question. Okay, uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Arvizo, and my question is, what type of food do you eat on the ISS, and how do you eat it if, if there is no gravity? It's a good question. Uh, we, our foods we eat are very similar to the foods you eat on the ground. However, our foods have to be prepared and packaged in a way that they can last for a long time before being e eaten. So they, we do things like uh, dehydrate them or irradiate them. And uh, as it comes to eating food, well, eating food can actually be kind of fun. We actually have a little example right here. Yeah, we have foods in many different forms, you know, and here's uh, some, uh, some, little, some little candies that come in, of course, the same form that you're used to at home. They're good. Thank you. Hello, I'm Luis Rizzo, and I have a question for you. How and how often are you able to shower? Where does the water go? Okay, well, we shower right before we leave for the space station, and then we shower right after we return from the space station. <laughs> so we don't have a shower up here is the bottom line. But what we do have is we have lots of towels, and we, uh, of course, some of these towels have a kind of soap built into them. We wet these towels down quite a bit with hot water, and basically you wash yourself up with the, uh, these wet towels, and you can clean yourself up pretty darn good. We also have shampoos that are called like rinseless shampoos. You kind of lather up your hair and you wash it really well, and then you just wipe it down with a towel. So we get ourselves pretty clean, but there's no shower up here, no running water. We just have water in uh, drink bags, basically. All right, thank you for your question. Hi, Mr. Astronauts, my name is Paige Courtright. And my question for you is, how would you relate being in space to being on Earth? How would we relate being in space as being on Earth? Well, it's a very similar day in the sense that we get up in the morning, we do the same things in the morning that you guys do, you know, you have some breakfast, you brush your teeth, all those same things, and we go off to work. Same idea, except we have a very short commute to work. We live right here in the same spot. But then when we're actually doing things, it's very different. As you can tell, everything floats here. That makes everything very, very different than on, on back on Earth. And so we have to change the way how we do things. Besides that, though, it is very similar. Hello, astronauts. My name is Juan Gonzalez. What do you do for fun in space? 
Well, you know, in space, there's lots of things you can do to have fun, but the things that you know we enjoy the most are obviously floating around and being weightless. This is a lot of fun. And the other thing is we have a great view of the Earth. You know, we have a cupola. Basically, it's it's almost like a glass bottom boat, if you will. It's got these six large windows, and we go in there and we look straight down on the Earth, and we take a lot of pictures of our, our hometowns. We take pictures of uh, of places that we've never been and we would like to go someday. The Caribbean. We just passed over the Caribbean a little while ago. It's a beautiful place to see from up here. So that's the thing that we enjoy the most is looking out the window at the beautiful earth below. Um, hello, my name is Brendan Hernandez. My question is, when you're in space with no gravity for so long, how do you feel when you come back to earth where this is gravity? Good question. You feel really, really heavy. <laughs> your arms you feel like they're just weighing so much, your body, your legs, everything. It's amazing. Um, so you also have a little bit of an effect on the, uh, we call it neurovestibular system. So you have an inner ear and it helps you figure out where gravity is and helps you know what's up and what's down. But we don't use that up here because we don't have that gravity effect. And so it, when it goes, when you come back down and it has to use, use it again, it kind of screws your head up for just a little bit till it reorients and gets it working all straight again. And that takes a little bit different for each person, but uh, uh, we're going to find out how that works in a little bit for Rick here. Hello, Mr. Astronauts. My name is Caleb Bricks, and my question is, what is your evacuation plan in case of an emergency? Yeah, that's a good question. So basically, we come up here right now, since the shuttle program has been retired, we use the Soyuz, Russian Soyuz vehicle to come up to the space station and to return. So three folks come up to the uh, space station on a Soyuz capsule. But it's just like when you drive somewhere in your car. The capsule is parked outside are parked, uh, connected to the International Space Station, and if there's an evacuation for some reason, if there's a fire or a depressurization or somebody gets sick, we, the three of us will climb back into the Soyuz capsule and we will fly back home. So it's kind of like it's our, uh, it's, it's our rescue ship, but it's also the same craft that brought us up here and that will bring us home also. Hello, Mr. Astronauts. My name is Eric Vinson, and I have a question. My question is, do you exercise on the ISS, and if so, how do you? Yes, we do. We exercise about two hours every day, and we need to do this so we don't have muscle loss and bone loss when we get back to Earth, which is very important for us. So we have three different types of equipment. We have a bicycle, we have a treadmill, and we have a resistive exercise device, which is like lifting weights. And that helps us very much. Uh, we like doing it, and it helps us. Uh, one, it helps us feel better, and it helps us stay in shape, and it helps our muscles and our bones stay strong. Hello, Mr. Astronaut. My name is Robert Romero, and I have a question. How many hours of sleep do you get, and how can you tell what time of day it is? Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting because up here, like you know, you probably know, we go around the Earth every 90 minutes. So the sun is constantly rising and setting, rising and setting as we circle the Earth. So we get 16 sunrises and sunsets every day. So you can't look out the window to determine what time of the day it is. You could wake up in the middle of the night and look out the window, and it could be daytime. So what we do is we keep a very similar uh, kind of uh, same similar profile as to what we live on Earth. You know, we we sleep for eight hours roughly and we turn all the lights off in the space station. We close the shutters on the windows so that the bright light doesn't come in, and we close the doors to our small little uh, our rooms, and uh, we sleep for eight hours. Then when we wake up, we turn all the lights on inside the space station. We open up the window shutters so that when it is light outside, the light comes in. And, uh, so we have a very similar day as to what you have on Earth, but it's all artificial. It's through the lights of the space station that we know whether it's uh, nighttime or daytime, and it's really, is it our work day or is it our sleep time? Hello, Mr. Astronauts. My name is John Tell Falcon, and my question is, how do you guys use space, uh, math in space? Uh, 
Oh, how do we use math in space? Well, luckily, I only have to use simple math up here. That's good for me. But the people who built and designed and engineered this wonderful vehicle we're on used lots of math. Math is a means to an end. You need math to be able to solve the problems of, of engineering and physics and, all, and everything we do in life. And so it's very important to do math. My name is Jermaine Wilson. Rick. Rick. Mr. Rick. Hello, Mr. Rick. My name is Jermaine Wilson, and my question is, can you see the Earth spin or rotate from the ISS? What do you see in space? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so we are going over, we are traveling around the Earth so fast at 17,500 miles an hour. So the Earth is, looks to us like the Earth is spinning below very, very quickly, but it's really us that, that's going around the Earth very quickly. So you don't actually see the Earth spin, uh, but you, you kind of know that it is be, uh, just, well, basically, I guess on all our training and all everything we learned in school, but you really can't see the Earth spinning because we're traveling so fast. It's kind of like an analogy might be if you were in a very fast airplane and uh, you went by a, a very slow airplane. It wouldn't, couldn't, look, wouldn't, couldn't tell if that small airplane was standing still or if it was moving, but you know it's moving because it's, it's flying in the air. So based on what you know, you know, based on what we know, the Earth is obviously spinning. Hello, Mr. Rick and Mr. Steve. My, um, my name is Angel Martinez, and my question is, how do math and science work together on the ISS? Uh, that's a great question, math and science. We do lots of science up here. And uh, we have an example of one of the science experiments going on right here. This is called spheres, and the idea behind this is it's a, a little remote, not remote control, but a software controlled uh, piece of equipment or satellite. And what it can do is you can have a software in there, you load up, and it will then control the satellite however you want to. And then the engineers and scientists have working on different algorithms and different ways of controlling these satellites. And they've actually have three of them up here. They can then do it all together and try to get them to all together to do something. And so that is a great science experiment they have going. And of course. To do those kind of engineering tasks and science tasks, you need math. Math solves your, your equations. You'll come up with the equations through physics and science, but you have to have math to actually solve it and get, come up with an answer. Hello, Mr. Rick. Since expert uh, since Expedition 39 crew members are from diverse backgrounds, what kinds of team, team building activities have you done before or during the mission? Yeah, that's right. We have uh, three Russian cosmonauts up here. We have Steve and I from the United States, and we got Koichi Wakata, who's uh, from Japan. He's actually the commander of the space station for these few weeks or few months. Uh, obviously, we trained a lot together on the ground. As for International Space Station, before you launch, you train for about two and a half, almost three years. And, of course, we train with each other on a daily basis. And we do lots of, uh, obviously, simulations and uh, spend a lot of time in the simulators together. But we also did uh, a, uh, basically, we went uh, camping, I guess. Yeah, it was yeah. outdoor leadership where we went outside and we spent a week out in the wilderness. And we were... Uh, uh, basically, out up in the Washington yeah, Washington Juan State Island. area, San Juan Islands, uh, kayaking, uh, sea kayaking. So we kind of learned to get to know each other. We got to work with each other in kind of an off nominal or uh, an extreme situation, if you will, camping and backpacking and, and canoeing out in the uh, out in the ocean there. So we spent a lot of time together training, but we also do some of these side activities too, just to get to know each other. And then up here, of course, we live together. We eat dinner together on a daily basis, and we do a lot of science together. We do a lot of repair work together, so we get to know each other quite well. And we don't really think of each other as coming from different countries. We just think of each other as our crewmates. You know, Koichi's our crewmate, uh, our Russian crewmates down the other end. They're just our crewmates. We don't think of them as uh, from coming from other countries. They're just our crewmates. Hello, Mr. Steve. Um, my question is, what is the difference between a mission commander, flight engineer, and a mission specialist? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, mission specialist was a term back used in the shuttle, 
and that's uh, similar to a flight engineer in uh, these days. Uh, there's not much difference when we, on a working daily basis, between what the commander does and what a flight engineer does on the space station. We still do the same amount of work. We do the science, we do the repair of the station, we all keep it running. What a commander do, though does, or what it has to do, is he works a lot with the ground to make sure everything in the big picture is working well. He also has a responsibility of making sure we're all ready for any emergency cases and then getting us through the emergency case. And those tasks, uh, along with just making sure everybody gets along and all things are running smoothly, is mainly the commander's job. Hello, Mr. Rick. My name is Aja Negre. Um, what, does this, what does the station satellite have? A control console or a cockpit like the, uh, like the space sh shuttle? Yeah, that's a good question because you, you wonder who's controlling the space station. Well, obviously the ground folks have a lot of control on what's going on on board the space station, but our interface with the space station is all done with laptop computers. There is no uh, cockpit, if you will. There's no control station. It's, uh, it's simply laptop computers. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of laptop computers. And, of course, these have very specialized software. Some of them have software that where we could send commands to the systems of the space station to open valves and close those valves. Some of them we use to look at our schedule, like what's the next task I have. Some of them we use to read our procedures. Some of them we use to read our email. So all these different computers have different uh, different purposes, and and, it, and it's really no uh, control cockpit like an airplane. It's simply all these laptop computers. Hi, sir. I'm CTC Sarah Foles. Um, and I have a question coming from Del Rio Middle School. What would happen to a sponge or a wet rag if you squeeze it in space? That's a good question. So we brought some stuff to just to try to figure that one out. Yeah, so Steve's got a, uh, this is a drinking bag. It's basically filled with water. You can see, you know, we obviously we can't drink out of a cup, so we got to keep it in a bag. And Steve's going to just squirt the uh, water in this, and then here's a simple washcloth. And, you know, up here without gravity, you could squirt a lot of water into a washcloth. And then, of course, without gravity, when you got to squeeze the washcloth, it's basically, well, we'll see what's going to happen here. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. It sounds like the mic is off. Yeah, and if you shake your, obviously the water is not going anywhere if you squeeze your hand, but if you uh, shake your hand, obviously the water will escape and go all over the place. Hi, I'm CTC Catherine Lowry, and I have a question from Lincoln K 8 Choice School. What happens when you run low on food and other supplies? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, if you obviously if you low run, uh, you run low on food. Uh, well, obviously you got to start eating a little bit less. But we have a uh, a series of cargo ships that come up here on a regular basis. We have the Russian cargo ship. We have a couple of commercial cargo ships that come up here. In fact, we just got one. It's uh, parked behind us, uh, Nader. Uh, what about three or four days ago? Yeah. It, it came up and we docked, and it brought us a uh, lots of food and lots of science equipment. Uh, but, you know, the folks on the ground think far, far ahead, and they make sure that we have enough food for many, many months, if not years. So it's really unlikely that a crew is going to run low on food. Uh, you may run out of your favorite food once in a while, but uh, we seldom uh, will run out of food completely. Sir, I'm CTC Noah Black, and I have a question coming from... Lincoln K-8 School, can you see other planets from the space station? Do they look any different when you're in space than from Earth? Yes, I mean, you can see like Venus and Saturn and the same thing as you can see in the Earth sky. We see the same thing. It might look just a little bit clearer because we're not going through the atmosphere, but uh, they're pretty much the same size and that kind of same relative brightness, but just a little bit clearer. Thank you, sir. 
Rick and Steve, we thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to speak to you and have a safe journey. Well, we thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.